This year of coaster additions is an unusual one, with Cedar Fair and Six Flags both only adding one large addition each, but there are still plenty of great coasters coming to America in 2023. In this video, we will rank the 10 best coasters coming to the US next year. Although we are only ranking the American coasters, I want to give a quick honorable mention to two European coasters, both from Intamin. These are Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid and Two Tatis at Park Asterix. These are both Intamin multi-launches and both look like awesome rides, so I wanted to quickly mention them here. Now back to the American coasters, at number 10 we have Big Bear Mountain at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. This is one of the largest family coasters I've ever seen, with a height of 66 feet and a track length of nearly 4,000 feet, making it the longest coaster at Dollywood. Big Bear Mountain is a Vacoma family multi-launch and is one of two Vacoma coasters to make this list. At number 9, we have Aquaman Power Wave at Six Flags Over Texas. Aquaman will be the first mock power splash to open in the United States and was originally scheduled to open in 2020. However, that was pushed back to 2021 due to COVID and then 2023 because Over Texas wanted to install a turntable to increase capacity. The mock power splash is basically a shuttle coaster that ends with a splashdown effect. The first installation, as well as the most well known, is Pulsar at Wallaby, Belgium. I'm not exactly sure what to expect with this attraction, but it definitely deserves a spot on this list. Coming in at number 8 is Matugani at Lost Island in Waterloo, Iowa. This is a relocated coaster, originally operating as Kanonen at Liseberg in Sweden. Matugani is an intimate accelerator coaster and features the signature accelerator hydraulic launch which launches trains from 0 to 47 miles per hour in 2 seconds. This coaster also features two inversions in its compact layout. While this attraction doesn't have the best stats, Intamin hydraulic launches always pack a punch and the layout is very fast paced. Overall, this looks like a fun coaster and hopefully draws some solid crowds to Lost Island this year. At the number 7 slot, we have Tron Light Cycle Run at Magic Kingdom. This is another attraction that had its opening date pushed back, as it was originally scheduled to open in 2021, but pushed its opening date back to spring 2023. Magic Kingdom's Tron will be a clone of the already existing Tron at Shanghai Disneyland, so we know what to expect with this coaster. It looks like a fun ride with typical top tier Disney theming. This almost seems like a Disney version of Hagrid's, and I will be interested to see which attraction coaster enthusiasts prefer. I'm guessing it will still be Hagrid's, but we will have to see. At number 6, we have Zambezi Zinger at Worlds of Fun in Kansas City. This is a skyline designed GCI coaster which is the first ground up coaster to feature Titan Track, although it is only on the lift hill and a small portion of the layout. Generally, GCI coasters are always well received, so it's about a guarantee that Zambezi Zinger will be a solid attraction. This does sort of seem repetitive considering there's already another GCI. Prowler in the same park, and I wish they would have tried to add some more unique elements with the Titan Track, but still, this is a decent addition that finds its way into the middle of this list. The new attraction is a throwback to a coaster that opened with the park, also called Zambezi Zinger. This was a Schwarzkopf speed racer that had a spiral lift hill. From what I've read, that coaster had a lot of sentimental value to the Kansas City community, so this new attraction should help boost attendance at Worlds of Fun this year. Also, it's nice to see Cedar Fair throw Worlds of Fun a bone for their 50th anniversary, and maybe this leads to parks like Valley Fair and Dorney Park getting a new addition within the next 5 years. The number 5 coaster on this list is Pipeline the Surf Coaster at SeaWorld Orlando. Pipeline will be the first B&M Surf Coaster, which is a reincarnation of the Stand Up Coaster. The Stand Up Coaster was a big gimmick in the 90s, but eventually parks figured out that people don't really like them because they are uncomfortable. There haven't been any stand-up coaster installations in the century until Pipeline. The surf coaster features launches, moving seats, and a revamped restraint design, so it figures to be a different experience than the stand-up coasters of the 90s. This coaster has gotten a lot of hate from some enthusiasts, but I'm willing to give this thing a chance. And given that it's a B&M, it deserves a spot towards the top of this list. At number 4 is the first coaster on this list from Codaland in Austin, Texas, Palindrome. Palindrome is a Gerstlauer shuttle coaster featuring two inversions taking both directions for a total of four. This looks like a fun ride, a bit on the shorter side perhaps, but a solid attraction. Also, it has this weird spike with like an airtime hill built into it. I think they are calling it a vertical hop stall. This is definitely the most intriguing element on the coaster. This leads right into our number three coaster, also from Codaland, Circuit Breaker. 
This is a Vacoma tilt coaster and will be Vacoma's first new generation project in America. For most of their existence, Vacoma had a reputation for building rough, unoriginal coasters. However, in recent years, Vacoma has built some of the best coasters in Europe, and hopefully it is only a matter of time before they start working with parks in the US. For that reason, I think this might be the most important coaster of the next 10 years. Obviously, this is a fairly bold prediction, but I want to see more new Vacoma creations in the States. The layouts on their new European coasters look awesome. And frankly, the tilt coaster looks like a better version of the B&M dive coaster. Circuit Breaker will feature four inversions and a 131 foot tall drop if you're in the back of the train. It looks like an exciting addition, but it's just not quite good enough to top the two RMCs on this list. At number two, it's Wildcat's Revenge at Hershey Park. I wasn't sure whether this or another certain coaster should take the number one spot, but I decided to put Wildcat's Revenge in the number two slot. This will be an iBox conversion of their former Wildcat coaster, which was the first coaster manufactured by GCI. RMC is building their revamped attraction with a 140 foot tall lift truss, 82 degree drop, four inversions, and multiple speed hills and wave turns. There was some speculation that Wildcat's Revenge would be a hyper hybrid, but even so, this looks like an awesome attraction. At this point, we know what we are getting from an RMC conversion, so there is little doubt Wildcat's Revenge will be an elite coaster, and it might give Hershey Park a top 3 coaster lineup in North America. And coming in at number 1, you all knew it was coming, it's Airy Force 1 at Fun Spot Atlanta. When this attraction was announced, it stunned the coaster community. This will be only the third coaster at the park, and the only one over 40 feet in height. Airy Force 1 will have a 154 foot tall truss lift hill, 83 degree drop, 4 inversions, and 3400 feet of track. Also, this is one of the best looking coasters out there, with its all white support structure and blue and red iBox track. The attraction will feature the largest 0G stall in America, a Raven truss dive, and two 0G rolls. Honestly, this might be a rare RMC where the inversions are the best elements on the ride, and of course, the attraction features multiple ejector airtime moments, including an outer bank, quad down, and a double up. The fact that this coaster was basically built on top of a cornfield makes it even better. While I think the gap between Erie Force 1 and Wildcat's Revenge is smaller than most people seem to think, I still think it is strong enough to claim the number one spot on this list. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing or at least dropping a like, as it greatly helps out the channel as we try to reach our goal of 1000 subscribers. If you agree or disagree with my opinion, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.